Hello and welcome to Oakville Matters. This is Kojiko Local Television, where we delve into the subjects that matter most to Oakville. And today we're looking at solutions for Oakville, vital solutions for Oakville, that follow on from the work of the Community Foundation of Oakville called Vital Signs. And Vital Signs is a way of looking at the state of our community through a data-informed lens that looks at how well everyone is doing and how much, uh, you know, how well people are able to all participate in our community. And with us are Dr. Sarah Cummings, who's a professor of sociology from uh, Sheridan. I was going to say university, but it, it's a college still, but it will be a university. <laughs> Wendy Ranella, who is the CEO of the Oakville Community Foundation. And uh, Mary D'Souza, who is the Executive Vice President of uh, First Ontario. And uh, among the three of you, you bring a lot to this discussion. Wendy, could you start us off by giving us a, a sense of how this, how we started? How did Oakville start to care about this? Well, uh, the very first Vital Signs was published in 2007. And it had started it uh, in the city of Toronto where they were publishing Vital Signs. And it seemed like a really good idea to do a community checkup that was data driven. And then um, it was also uh, through discussions and interviews with uh, leading uh, charities and not for profits in the community. So last year in 2015, we did our fourth, and it highlighted four key areas of concern which are housing, the equity gap in terms of uh, the distance in incomes between high and low income people in our community, inclusion because we're becoming more diverse, and mental health resources. So those were the key priorities. And this year, the vital solutions we're looking at is a process where we're bringing all components of the community together to help us develop the solutions. So you moved from pointing with alarm at um, alarming statistics to organizing people to try to make them better? Absolutely. So previously we, what we would do is we would use the information from Vital Signs to help inform our granting. So we could advise the people who have funds with us as well as our community grantings uh, to develop, to say to the charities, come back and give us proposals in these key areas. Now we're getting a little more engaged in saying, how can we as a community, using all the wonderful resources and organizations that we have from the town, the region, academia, business, amongst others, come together to develop those solutions? Well, we have a graphic from the 2015, I think from 2015's Vital Signs, mm -hmm. and if we could look at that, um, uh, you can, you, why don't you speak to it because some of the type's too small for people to read. <laughs> well, but. what we found is that Oakville is indeed a community of contrast. Everyone knows us for our wealth, but we're also uh, the highest and the lowest incomes in the region. So within the Halton region, uh, we do have a, a, a high number of people at 160,000, but we also have a higher share of people below 30,000, which is the low income cutoff and one in 10 children in Oakville lives in poverty. So we are very diverse and uh, with our Vital Solutions report, we've identified that there's a 21 times disposable income gap between the top 10% and the bottom 10%, which is significantly higher than the rest of the community. And at the same time, you'll see we're, we're not this white waspy uh, suburb anymore. We're becoming increasingly diverse. Uh, these, this is 2011 data and it shows about a third of people who are in Oakville are, are from another country, let alone another city or community. Um, and then of course we have 25% who are visible minorities. So we are very diverse uh, relative to the national comparators. So um, Dr. Cummings, um, the, uh, in the world of sociology, which I don't know a lot about, <laughs> um, it seems to me that uh, as I understand sociology, it's trying to um, study society through a numerical lens, through a data shape, uh, through a data analysis. Is that is that right? Not always through numerical. So I personally am a qualitative researcher, but it is trying to understand the trends and what's happening in society through actual research and theories about why it's occurring and when it's occurring across time. So it's. A lot of people think we armchair theorize. There's a lot of that conversation about sociologists, but really we do a lot of groundwork. We do a lot of studies on my particular area of expertise is on social inequality. And we do that through both fact number gathering, so statistical analysis, but also through 
interviewing and focus groups with people who are affected by whatever issue it is at hand. Because often what research finds is that what might be assumed to be the issue for marginalized populations is not always felt the same by marginalized populations. So this leads to a concern about having voices from the lived experience involved in the discussions of the solutions? Definitely, and not just the, for us it's really important that we incorporate the voices of all the people involved, and I think that's what's really great about our relationship with the Oakville Community Foundation, is that there is an understanding that we need to engage the frontline workers who work in these areas, the funders, the government, the different levels of government, as well as the clients or people who use whatever services we're investigating. Yeah. So, uh, Mary, the uh, I know a credit union probably doesn't think of itself as a bank, but from the street level, you're you're a bank, I think, or maybe a people's bank, or a member bank. But but how does a bank become attracted to this and and uh, and and maybe you could set that up. For sure, and I think um, the, the credit union being more than a sort of the people's bank is a, a good analogy. When uh, we decided to expand in Oakville, one of our mandates isn't just to open up new branches to provide the same services as you would receive in a financial institution, a bank of some, of some kind. What we ensure we try to do is to find ways of having an impact in the communities because that's the basis. We are about profits for a higher purpose. So as you've heard us talk about so far, it's about making uh, change in the, in the town of Oakville through these vital solutions and we really wanted to be part of that so that our expansion as a credit union was about having community impact and not just providing financial services. So it needs to be more than that for us. So in, in, uh, in what ways are you woven into the um, vital solutions work then? So when, we, uh, when Wendy presented the opportunity to be a sponsor, uh, we saw the work that was going to be done changing it from a conversation around vital signs to actual solutions. And that made the difference for us to want to engage as the title sponsor of her vital signs project. So we are currently um, in, the, in a, a two year relationship which I'm sure will go on and on, but um, it, it's the, yeah, exactly, hey, it's the impact. Know. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Sign that agreement. Um, it, it is the title sponsor because we believe in the solutions work that is being done and we don't want to be a name on a document that just says we've given money. We want to be part of that solution as well in which case I work on the leadership team with, uh, with Wendy and each of, we have staff on each one of the pillars as the solutions are being developed. Right, so we, we have um, kind of a, a, I think of Oakville in a, uh, I have a numerical context for Oakville, where uh, one of the, well let's see, there's a national magazine says we're the best place in Ontario to raise a family. Uh, same magazine says we're the third best place in the country to live. I like to say the other two, number one and number two are cities and we're the town, so we're the best town. Mm -hmm. and. When, when people are in a good mood, they give me that. Um, we have the, uh, at, in our health uh, uh, department, we have reports showing that we have the highest health and the longest longevity. Um, and for nine years, uh, StatsCan has reported that we have the safest community. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of indices like that that say this is a, a relatively successful society or community. Um, but what I've found and what you, you've shown is that, that that disparity, that contrast, as good as those things are, when you speak of averages, you, you miss the highs and the lows. Uh, the, I think the work on inequality that, that was very sensational last year from Thomas Piketty got everybody's attention uh, more on this. Um, the, uh, how have you fanned out into the community on each of your pillars? Have you found, and how has it been, have you found um, a ready uh, out set of allies or have you had to kick and scratch to get people to pay attention? Uh, well, in terms of getting the community engaged, it's actually been very successful. Uh, the town, the region, Sheridan College, a variety of sponsors, including the largest employer, uh, Ford of Canada, is sitting at the table. So there is great compassion in our community. 
Uh, in terms of what uh, putting the the metal to the you know the getting everything rolling, I guess is the best way to describe it. We did go out with our granting, but what we asked people to do for the first time ever was we said we're going to fund some collaborative grants in these areas. So we had some terrific proposals come in where people have begun to work together. So we have a variety. We have the women's um, Halton Women's Shelter working with the Reach Out Center for Kids to place a resource worker there for children's mental health. So we're beginning to see where we're getting greater um, collaborations going forward. Where we did have one um, very big uh, creative problem solving event was just, uh, just this past week at National Affordable Housing Day where we actually put the research to practice. Uh, with the help of Community Development Halton, we have mapped all of the housing assets for people within the community, actually across the region, and at the same time um, put them against populations of uh, mapping that shows where low-income families are, low-income seniors, low-income youth, and using these as the kind of the background to help us build solutions. So Sarah was part of the National Affordable Housing Day, as was Mary, um, event where we actually use the creative problem solving uh, discipline that is uh, what Sheridan does and and um, Sarah led a lot of research leading up to that day which do you have some early indications of solutions to share or so what happened was first we did uh, the research on the background so we are in the housing pillar right now and we conducted a bunch of focus groups six focus groups to be exact to pinpoint what the what the community felt were the main problems or gaps in services for Oakville, or for the Halton region, sorry. And from there, my partner in my research, Dr. Michael McNamara, he led, he came up with some questions that led the creative problem solving sessions. For again, we had 12 groups. We had 12 groups participating in creative problem solving. And they all came up, there was about seven or eight different ideas from each group that they came up with that we're now sorting through to come up with some hopefully fundable projects that we can put forward and say this looks like a really strong project. The one thing I wanted to say that came out of my research piece alone was that I've done studies very similar in three different regions now. This is the most willingness I've ever seen for collaboration in, a reg in an area over housing. It seems from the research that people are ready to be collaborative and have really great ideas and are really looking for direction in how to do that. So I really thought the research was really positive and I was excited to see so many innovative, creative individuals working within the sector. I, I would say these, these social program or social concerns, uh, one way to understand it and then maybe an oversimplification, but still it's a valid or useful thumb uh, sketch, right? Uh, social issues and the like are done in a, in a cooperative way across the region of Halton by the four municipalities that, that make up Halton. That's Burlington and uh, Halton Hills and Milton and Oakville, and, and I'm doing that alphabetically to not show favor. <laughs> and, uh, the, and so housing is done at the regional level. We're very, we have a very interesting set of counselors from all four communities who all are on the page for we need to be inclusive and we need to make sure everybody comes along with, with the success of our community. And I, I offer as proof of that that uh, for the last 10 years we've been creating social housing and no other region has. Uh, nationally, uh, social housing has been stalled for a good 10 years, that's kind of coincidental with something political, but I'm not going there. <laughs> uh, so we've done 80, 90 units a year, and now the, the province and, the, and Canada are talking very uh, constructively about launching more, and we're saying, well, w welcome, and uh, you know, we'll take more. <laughs> So it's good to know that you're that you're finding that it, it it's um, going to be reassuring to my fellow council members that they're not too far ahead of the crowd, which is uh, well known as being a dangerous thing to do politically. <laughs> so um, uh, let's put up the the four pillars um, because I think that might be helpful to people, and uh, to the degree that you can see that housing is there as the second pillar, uh, we've also got. Uh, mental health and uh, uh, inclusion and equity. 
I'm, I'm thinking equity stands, does equity stand, what does it stand for? I won't guess, I'll just ask. It stands for the equity gap, which is the gap between the have and the have not. So inequality. Yes. And uh, inclusion, that we, we want to deal there with... Um, it's actually creating a greater sense of belonging for people who are within our community. We have a high commuter rate, as you probably are aware, of people who work in other areas. Uh, they live here, so uh, they're here in the evenings and on weekends. So there's issues of inclusion, not just for people who are coming from other countries, but for people who live here. Yeah, in the in the police, we find that the the middle that uh, third pillar, mental health, uh, is related to people being uh, feeling like they're locked out, feeling isolated, feeling alienated, feeling not included, mm -hmm. and so it's I, I guess it's. Uh, appropriate that you put them next to each other because we we certainly find them next to each other all the time. Yes, and actually all the pillars are interrelated. So those who are newcomers often don't have jobs and can't find housing. We know that newcomers also suffer from higher rates of mental distress, if, particularly if there's cultural differences. Um, then, of course, uh, people who suffer from mental health issues, 85% uh, of them don't have jobs. So all of these things, as you note, are very interrelated, and that's why we see it as a pillars of a bridge to help build that bridge between our community of contrasts. So that's the image that we're trying to project. So on inclusion, one of the things that I heard a lot about in the recent uh, elections to the South was uh, the marginalized and people, and it, it, the way it came to light was some states wanted people to have voter ID and in order to get voter ID you had to have things like accounts, bank mm -hmm. accounts and stuff. Does, uh, does First Ontario uh, do we have that problem here? Do, do you need a bank account in order to participate in, in, uh, in our programs here? And if, we, if you do, does First Ontario have a, uh, or what's the story in banking in terms of how do, how do people get into the banking system? So I think there, you know, when you, when you speak about marginalized, and I think there's a new reference term um, for that, but you know, where our footprint is Southern Ontario, from Oakville to, to Niagara Falls and down as far as into um, Oxford County and Haldeman. And we see a lot of differences, as Wendy has talked about, that are here in, in Oakville and in Halton. And so what we're doing is we pilot programs, for instance, we just um, launched a first biz program in Hamilton to help those individuals who are new to Canada, who perhaps cannot get uh, a job, uh, their spouse might have uh, the ability to do so, but they cannot. And we're looking for ways to create programs for them to get into feeling included and, uh, and so forth. The learning from being part of this Vital Solutions is what we're hoping to gain. Uh, we do have some, some expertise and some beginnings of participation in the housing space, but the other pillars are where we're looking to learn how we can support through providing banking services. So. No individual can go without banking. We are all required to provide accounts. It's how we support people after the fact that is, I think, the missing link in how you engage in a community and not just provide a bank account. So that's very important. Could you just um, build on that for a second? Everybody's entitled to a bank account. You have to give one. But really, it's, it's the care and handling of the bank account holder. I, I would really like to know more about that. So it, it's our engagement in the community to find out what's happening here, to find those types of things we can do to help, or to be creative in providing additional services, um, whether it be special kinds of accounts, consideration for credit, um, handling them through, handling people's, everyone goes through life, and we need, to, we need to be caring and compassionate about how we can support them in those situations whether they need to skip a payment on a mortgage because they have gone through, um, they've lost a job, or if they work in the manufacturing sector and they're laid off. How can we support them through what we have as a community assistance program in helping them find alternate employment or looking at their finances and saying, how can we help you get through the next six months? You received a severance. What can we do while you're back trying to get back on your feet? So it's being much more considerate uh, and, and um, finding ways to help them. It's not always about a defined program, it's about knowing your member and knowing your community in order to make decisions right there in the spot that will help them continue on in their life 
and feel secure in what they're doing. You're making banking sound like a people business. <laughs> You'd think, yes. It is possible. Yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely possible. So we're working, um, the, the police board, which I'm the chair of, is working on a, there's a provincial mandate coming. It's one of these funny things where they've told us a year ago this is coming. And so we're trying to get in ahead of this. And it's uh, the mandate is we're supposed to create quote unquote community safety and well-being plans. We used to and still do have to do a three-year business plan but this is a new idea where shaped to the communities that we serve in the region of Halton we have a community safety and well-being plan custom made for each area and we've started that work with roundtable discussions of uh, NGOs and agencies and uh, 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 officials from the town, officials from the region, officials from the police and I want to talk for a second about where that belongs. I, I know that you're involved already. I, I don't know if you are. No, but I should be. Well, we'd <laughs> like you to be. And, um, and, or and as you a too. sociologist should mm -hmm. be. <laughs> well, and, but here's the deal. We just missed the meeting the, when we had that discussion. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if I, I'm going to try and tell this in 25 words or less. And, and everybody likes to joke that all my stories take more than one candle, so I'm going okay. to struggle with this. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this started because the hard-bitten, uh, grizzled, old, uh, experienced, cynical police chiefs of our country grew uh, frustrated a few years ago with how obvious it had become to them that crime had social causes. It had mental health causes, addiction causes, social inclusion causes, and they're being overwhelmed by calls for service. And, uh, and, and they're very expensive responders. And people are complaining about how much the police cost. And 80% of what the police do now is non-crime, responding mm -hmm. to basically problems of social order, uh, mental health, addiction, all the things we don't really want to send people to crime school, I mean prison for. And uh, I mean, we all agree prisons are crime schools, right? And uh, so we've been creating all across the country, police forces, what we call a situation table where we'll call together the other helping agencies in a community and we'll, because of confidentiality, you can't identify a person to each other. You say, well, we have this person who keeps doing such and so and that gets them in. And then everybody goes, oh, we know who that is. And, and what's been happening out of that is intervention programs to try to put the, the developmental assets that they're missing uh, together for them so that they can break out of the, the the unconstructive or destructive path that they're on. This has been very successful for four or five years and, and it's really catching fire. And the province began to think, we need a policy uh, that encompasses all of this. And, uh, and because this started with hard-bitten, cynical, tough police chiefs, mm -hmm. it's, in the, it's in the community, uh, community Safety and Correctional Services Ministry because that's the ministry that owns this and they only have the Police Services Act to work with. Well, Halton and Waterloo are two of the more progressive regions. We think this belongs not only not in the police and maybe not even in the regional government but in, in, the, um, in the community. And, uh, and Waterloo is proceeding and Halton is proceeding to work towards that, that, that point. So the, the question's going to be, does, should a community well-being plan, I'm just going to drop that, pull that piece out of it because that's the exciting part that no one's ever really looked at before in Ontario. Should that be in the police board? Should that be in the, the health and social services uh, department of, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the regional government? Or should that be more of a partnership with the, the uh, non-governmental agencies and community uh, organizations such as the, the and, and not, not to single out the Oakville Community Foundation, but all of the helping uh, organizations in our community. Where do you feel it belongs? It's a very burning question for me, and I'm <laughs> hoping to pick your brain on that. Uh, Mary, do you want to start? Sure. I guess for me it would be, as opposed to knowing that all the the, the levels or where it should land. My view would be where it has the leadership that can drive it but sustain it. Because too often we get into these programs and budgets uh, reduce its attention or other agendas reduce its attention. Who's going to be the best uh, to drive 
this type of uh, an initiative, but sustain it for the long term and perhaps integrate it and all this community collaboration that's happening today, let's get on that momentum and who's driving that that can ensure that that program doesn't lose steam. Wendy, would you like to see civilian groups calling to the table police and government, or would you like to see the regional government calling to the table the police and community groups, or would you like to see the police calling everybody to the table? Well, it depends what the discussion is at the table. So. Um, well, it's basically going to have to, well, I, it's for us to define, but right. I hope it'll be what programs can we create to foster greater well-being in our community? Mm -hmm. That's the goal. You know, um, I can't. I can see it working well on both sides. Uh, I think generally there has to be a commitment from all parties who uh, become part of collaboration. I know you've made a, a commitment very broadly about uh, the need or the ability of the community to address the the rates of poverty here, and we could be the first town to do that. So that type of leadership is very important in these type of initiatives. So. Um, when you start an initiative, I think you really need the leadership from the top to cite what Mary said, to get everything moving, and then you set up the processes so that it can have the longevity that it needs to sustain itself. Sarah, as a professor of sociology, do you have advice for us on how to organize this? I think that one of the keys is making sure that that community piece is there and making sure the right people are at the table. and often. People, we choose based on who we know rather than what are the best services out there. And I think it's really important that not only are we taking people from all the sectors, wraparound programming is very important. So we need to understand all of the issues at the same time. So even in this study, just dealing with housing alone doesn't help us. We need to deal with mental health. We need to deal with lack of employment. And so you have to be very careful in creating that table and who is there to make sure all those sectors are recognized at the same time but also the people who need the help. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, I find that useful information and, and uh, I, I didn't really, I still don't know where it should be, but, <laughs> but I gather you don't know where it should be either. Um, I think uh, I've been very uh, taken by the, the research that says authenticity requires that the people with the lived experience have to be participating. And uh, so I guess we'll have to continue to struggle with what is the solution to that. Uh, let me ask you to stay engaged with me on this and to help me. And welcome to it. I, I, I appreciate that, you, that this might have been a bit of a, a new thing for you. Uh, as always, it's, it's very good to be with you and talk about Oakville Matters. And as you can see, this is a topic that can engage us for years to come, but to the benefit of our entire community. Thanks for being with us.